Hi class, we're here to do our third read of our story of the week, One Little Mouse. As always, focus your attention, concentrate, use your eyes, ears, and brain, and ignore distractions. Let's begin. One Little Mouse by Dory Chaconis, illustrated by Le Yuen Pham. One little mouse took a look at his house deep in the woodland ground. This nest is too small, not roomy at all. There must be a new one around. Readers, do you think the mouse's house is too small? Or do you think it's just right for him? Why do you think that? I think. It's just right for that little mouse. Let's continue. Two blackish moles peeked out of their holes and called to the mouse passing by. We have a fine nest in which you can rest. So little mouse thought he would try. But their diet was wormish and that made Mouse squirmish. He very soon said goodbye. Readers, why do you think the moles have claws on their feet? If you focus your attention on the pictures, we can see the moles have these claws. Why do you think they have those claws on their feet? Think about where they live. Where do they live? Yes, underground. Do you think those claws help them dig? Me too. Three meadow frogs were leaping from logs. You'll like sleeping here, they said. Mouse thanked them politely, but curling up tightly, he found it too cold for a bed. With a wheeze and a sneeze, he was sure he would freeze. This never will do, he said. Readers, when Mouse tried to live with the frogs, what is the problem? Right, it's too cold and wet. Not fit for a little mouse. Four bobwhite quail ran up from the veil. If you're looking for some place to rest, we have a nice hollow. And if you will follow, we think we have room for a guest. But Mouse found it bumpy and clumpy and lumpy. Just too many eggs in the nest. Friends, what has happened so far in the story? In the beginning, first, Mouse thinks his house is too small and thinks I better go find another one. Next, what happens? Yes, and then what happens? Good, well done. Five greeny snakes from meadows and lakes hissed, come home with us if you dare. No thank you, Mouse cried and hurried to hide. Snakes gave him a terrible scare. Readers, what would you do if you came across five snakes? Would you go home with them? Six baby cottontails hopped along hilly trails. Come, little mouse, share our bed. Oh, thank you, said mouse. I'm in need of a house. And he happily laid down his head. But the cottontails bunched up and crunched up and hunched up. And soon I'll be scrunched up, mouse said. Readers, why does a mouse leave the home of the cottontail rabbits? 
There's too many rabbits. Was he comfortable? No. Seven gray squirrels ran in circles and swirls, then carried Mouse up to their nest. You may stay here with us if you don't make a fuss. And Mouse said, I will do my best. But the nut nest was clicky and clacky and cracky. He left without one bit of rest. Readers, why isn't a squirrel's nest a good home for a mouse? Well, if we don't understand why the squirrel's nest is not a good home for a mouse, what could you do? You could ask teacher to reread something. You could study the pictures. Let me reread what the author says. But the nut nest was clicky and clacky and cracky, and he left without one bit of rest. What's the problem in the nest? Right, it's so noisy. Too many nuts. Eight chickadees flew in with the breeze. We have a fine place in the willow. But Mouse said, dear me, I can't sleep in a tree. Imagine a branch for a pillow. Readers, besides the tree as a pillow, why else might being high up in the tree not be good for the mouse? Sure, he could be afraid of heights. Maybe he uh, doesn't like climbing so high in trees. Mm -hmm. Nine porcupine waddled by in a line. They called to the mouse, good day. We have a nice den right here in the glen. Thank you, mouse answered, I'll stay. But their sharp quills were sticking and picking and pricking. So Mouse quickly went on his way. Readers, what happens after the four bobwhite quail offer their nest to the mouse? Who, yes, the five green snakes offer to have Mouse stay with them. Then six cottontails, seven squirrels, eight chickadees, and nine porcupines say that the mouse can stay with them. Friends, in this nest, the porcupine's quills are pokey, picky, sharp, prickling. Porcupines have sharp quills. Would it be comfortable to sleep with a porcupine? No way. Ten small opossums were eating plum blossoms. Come on, sleep with us, they were singing. They nodded his tail, and Mouse let out a wail to find himself suddenly swinging. A terrible tizzy. I'm upside down dizzy. A mouse tail is not made for clinging. Friends, why do you think the possums hang by their tails? Yeah, it seems like it's very comfortable for them. And their tails are really good at being wrapped around trees. They like to swing by their tails too. Did you know this is also how they like to sleep? Upside down. Then Mouse turned around to the darkening wood and scampered along just as fast as he could back to his own little comfortable house so tiny and tidy just right for a mouse and when evening shadows crept over the ground and covered the woodland here's what was found friends whom has mouse met on his adventures in the woodland can you say some of the animals the moles Frogs, bobwhite quail, green snakes, baby cottontails, squirrels, chickadees, porcupine, 
and possum. So many animals that live in the woodland. Ten small opossums asleep in the glen. Nine porcupine nestled up in their den. Eight chickadees roosting high in the willows. Seven gray squirrels using soft tails for pillows. Friends, where would you sleep if you lived in the woodland? Six baby cottontails snug in their nest. Five green snakes coiled up for a rest. Four bobwhite quail very still in the veil. Three meadow frogs sleeping on logs. Two blackish moles deep in their holes. Friends, which animal's home would you like to sleep in? Would you like to sleep in the log with the frogs? No, it's wet in there. How about all curled up and bunched up like the rabbits? Maybe. How about underneath the ground like the moles? Mm, I don't know if I'd like to sleep in the holes. How about in a nice nest like the quails? If we visited the woodland, we would probably bring a tent to sleep in or a camper or a sleeping bed. That's what make us comfortable in the woodland. And one little mouse, one tired little mouse, one content little mouse, sound asleep in his house. Readers, what happens last in our story? Yes, Mouse finds that his own house is the best house for him after all. And it curls up to sleep. Readers, we've come to the end of our story. Thank you for being here with me today. Remember, stay healthy, helpful, and calm. See you soon, friends.